Well, hello, I'm Margaret. I'm co-chairing this session, and I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Andrew Woods from Curtin University in Australia. Andrew is an engineer, uh, also strong background in 3D stereographics, visualization, 3D reconstruction, 3D cameras, um, has been very instrumental in the in electronic imaging conference and the SDNA conference in particular. So we're delighted to have you speak. Thank you. Thank Welcome, you. Andrew. Thank you, Margaret. Um, so this title is about using a random dot stereogram as a test image uh, for performing 3D demonstrations, of which we do a lot of at the facility I run at Curtin University. And uh, I'd like to acknowledge my co-authors, Wesley Lamont and Joshua Hollick uh, from the Curtin Hive. Um, so the problem is this, and fortunately we also have a solution, which, which is uh, a nice loop to have. So at the, um, the visualisation facility I run at Curtin University called The Hive, um, as I said, we do a lot of 3D demonstrations and occasionally the equipment doesn't work quite as we would expect. Um, and we really do want everyone to have a great experience. So we want to catch things when there is a problem. Um, and the solution we found is just a very quick slide that goes at the front of any demonstrations is use a random dot stereogram um, uh, to ensure everything is working correctly. So a little bit of background. Um, the Hive is Curtin University's visualisation facility. Um, it's both a physical facility with lots of different displays around the room. Uh, on the left is a 24 megapixel display. The next display is our cylinder display, which you'll see a bit of, more of in a second. Uh, the wedge display is in the other, in, in the third corner of the room, and then there's a dome display, uh, which is a sort of a half dome um, display, which fills your entire peripheral and primary field of view. So it's a former gallery space. It's 15 metres square by 15 metres square, with nice tall four metre high ceilings, and uh, um, we've got all these big, large screen interactive displays around the room. Two of them are stereoscopic, and. Um, um, uh, we also have a team of uh, four people that support uh, the operations of the facility and, and importantly support academics who uh, wish to use visualisation in their research projects. So the first of these displays um, that I particularly want to talk about is the cylinder display which is a 180 degree field of view um, cylindrical style display, three metres high, eight metre diameter. It's driven by um, uh, four sorry, three projectors projecting around the different segments of the display. Um, it is in 3D and we're using active stereo for that using the, uh, the Volfoni 3D glasses. Um, and uh, on the, the other display I mentioned, we, we use a slightly different style of 3D glasses called uh, from Expand and um, uh, both of them are um, time sequential active shutter glasses. Um, so what can possibly go wrong when you're doing a 3D demonstration? The software might not work correctly, it just might not switch into 3D, or it might something might happen that it's in reverse 3D, reverse stereo. Uh, the glasses might turn off. These are active glasses, so each individual pair might develop an individual problem. Um, so the glasses might be turned off. Some people press the button as you hand it to them and that might turn it off. The battery might be flat or they just might be malfunctioning full stop. Um, generally, they're quite reliable, but you know, we, we, like I said, we, we want everyone to have a good experience. So we want to catch things when they do occur. It also might be the, the situation that there might be audience members who don't see stereo. They might be stereo blind. Um, the usual figure quoted in the literature for stereo blindness is um, five to 10%. Um, our incidental experience that this fig that figure is probably much less and, and um, we haven't done any formal studies on that so we're not absolutely sure but we, um, as far as we can tell, it's much less than 5% of the people that come through the hive that, that have, have uh, stereo blindness. Um, if we're giving a demonstration and if we don't have a test procedure, um, it just doesn't work to ask them does the 3D look correct? They'll say, 
yeah, I think so. And who knows? It could do or it couldn't. So the use of a random dot stereogram allows us to answer these, answer that question very definitively. So a little bit of background about the ra random dot stereogram. Um, invented by um, Bela Uless. John Merritt uh, very kindly got my pronunciation right um, along those lines. Um, John did some work with Bela a long time ago. Um, and he invented this technique of showing a random field in one eye, and it's almost the same random field or random dot pattern in the other eye, except in its very simplest approach, you just offset a little bit. Now, how, how many people in the audience have worked out what's in the centre of this random dot stereogram? A few people. A few more people. I think this one's a square, isn't it? I'm just going to... Look, myself, yes, this one's a square. This is one of Baylor's very early ones. Um, so the advantage of this approach is it provides no monocular cues. Um, as I've got it set up here, it does require you to, to free view it, but the same left and right image pair can be presented to any stereoscopic display, and as I'll show you in a few minutes. Um, so it, it, it uses stereoscopic vision exclusively, and as a result, it tests the presence of stereoscopy exclusively. That's a nice picture of Baylor on the right, and it almost looks like there's a random dot pattern behind him and on his shirt. I don't know whether that was intentional. All right, so this is the hive um, with the cylinder display on the left and the wedge display on the right. You might like to think of the wedge being two walls of a cave, um, but it's two rear projected panels mounted side by side at 90 degree angle. Um, and um, um, on each of these displays, we've got a random dot stereogram showing on each, using different approaches to, um, to generate that random dot stereogram. Um, on the left, the cylinder display we often use for um, virtual environments, particularly uh, using uh, the Unity um, development engine. And on the right-hand side, we mainly see that display being used for scientific visualisation using a wide range of different packages. Um, we do a lot of uh, video um, playback on that system as well. So we've got um, uh, stereograms, uh, sorry, random dot stereograms on each of them. Um, here's what was showing on the right-hand screen on the wedge display, and uh, hopefully everyone can see a number 27 there. And that's what we just say. Just uh, we just make sure we just get people to say if they can't see the number on screen, raise your hand and we'll swap your glasses. Um, so uh, um, it's just a number protruding from the image. If it's reversed, then we can usually see that immediately. Um, we can also just ask them, does it protrude or does it, um, does it sink into the display? And then this is the, um, the random dot stereogram we use on the, uh, in, in Unity on the cylinder display. Um, we're always sort of optimising. I think there's a little, we need to have a little bit of a board around the edge to, to make it a little bit more obvious, but we've got uh, a number on, hidden in the, uh, the random stop stereogram again. Does everyone see the image? Sorry, see the number? Everyone see 42? No? no? Okay, so that's a, that's a joke I usually run. Um, the other joke is to say, okay, so you can see your IQ on screen. Of course, it's got nothing to do with that. Um, so um, basically, we just show that at the beginning to make sure. And if there are anyone who raises their hand and um, uh, says that there's a problem or says they can't see the number, we'll swap the glasses initially and also just try the glasses and just make sure that they are working or not. Um, if the glasses were working, then it's possible that they are stereo blind or just having some issues with these particular images. I also usually say that the reason we put this on screen is to test the glasses, but also about 5% of the population can't see in 3D, um, and you might be in that group of people. Um, and this illustrates how we um, do the random dot stereogram with, the, uh, with Unity. Um, so the, the number sits, sits forward as, a, as a, another random dot uh, uh, pattern. So the the use of a random dot stereogram has many benefits. It's, it's a clear proof of functionality. People see the number or they don't see the number. So it's, it's, a, it's a very good test case. 
Um, it also allows, allows us to test that it's not in reverse 3D, test the polarity of the stereoscopic images. Um, it tests the hardware, it, tends, it tests the whole loop, um, and also it tests whether um, individual people have uh, stereoscopic perception. In comparison, if we just relied upon the, stereoscopic, the regular stereoscopic scene of a 3D demonstration, then it might not have a lot of depth, it might have monocular cues, and it might not have obvious stereoscopic polarity. It's just not something that we can easily say to someone, can you see a number? The benefit of having a number in there is that there's minimal confusion, um, it's universal, mostly, um, and uh, there's, there's no interpretation of symbology or language. So, um, and also we can change the number. Um, in the Unity um, experience, we can just hit a, hit a key and it just changes the number, not that, not that we need to. There are some limitations of random dot stereograms. Um, sometimes, if the random dot stereogram hasn't been constructed correctly, you can actually see the number without the glasses on. Can anyone see that here? There's sort of a little bit of a hint of it. Without the glasses on, there's no um, stereo here. No glasses. Well, it's same as before, it's actually 27. It's a little bit harder to view here, but it's, it, it, it's a little bit of a hint viewable. Um, in some cases, the grid might be too fine. So if someone's got degraded vision and they haven't got a very good acuity and either one or two eyes, and they might not see the grid, it might be, the grid might be too fine. So there's some optimization in terms of the actual grid density. But if the grid is too coarse, then you wouldn't be able to easily see a number in there. Um, and also, if you have the layers too far separated, you might also find that people might have trouble viewing that as well. So there's some in, important um, characteristics of the random dot stereogram you need to um, use so that uh, you don't uh, make it hard for them. Now, just, just late last year, there was a paper published by Jenny Reid, who's been a, a keynote presenter here at the conference, on characterising the random dot pre school stereo test, um, which is a stereo test that's normally used by op ophthalmologists for children aged between 2 and 11 years. And on the right hand side is what that random dot uh, pattern looks like without the glasses on. And um, what you can see is that the random dot is visible without the glasses on. Um, it's a lot more visible with the glasses on, but that, the reason for this is that the background has been put at the screen depth and the protruding part is the only thing that's sticking out. Um, so anyone want to take a punt at what all these different layers are? So on the left is the key of what uh, um, the symbols are used. Anyone want to take a guess what this one is? <laughs> Ivan Sutherland, no, thank you. Thank you, Greg. Uh, that's actually nothing. There's nothing in that one. Uh, this one is is the is the Christmas tree. Uh, this one down here is the circle, and this one here for bonus points is the star. That's right. Um, so basically, if you've got a kid who's got a little bit of nous, then they'll be sort of invalidating this test. You certainly would not want to use this with Air Force pilots, which um, have some motivation to potentially bypass the, uh, the, the purpose of a test like this. But anyway, this one's focused on, on children. So that's a paper that was published in November of 2019. Um, a little bit of example of why this is important. Um, we were giving a, a presentation to an important group um, uh, probably five years ago now. And fortunately, we did do this little test at the beginning. And we found out that the head of the group was stereo blind. So we sort of had this hypothetical scenario running through our brains that we went through all the presentation, showed how wonderful all this, all this stuff was. And then we can imagine that once we packed up and left, um, the, uh, the manager of this group said, that, well, that was a waste of time. I couldn't see any advantage at all. Don't talk to me about it again. And then you wouldn't get any of those calls. So having identified that the person was stereo blind and, and you know, politely um, helping them understand and, and realise that, they would be then much more 
um, willing to listen to the, the viewpoints of their staff. So that's an example of why it's important. Um, it's also generally important that people understand and, and get it. Uh, and some people won't and they need to understand. It's, I think it's important for them to understand why as well. Um, what I'd like to mention here is Stereo Sue, who um, attended the Stereo Conference in 2008. And uh, a few years before that, she um, was the subject of uh, an article by Oliver Sacks, and eventually she wrote her own book. Um, and she was stereo blind until about the age of 46, when she started to have visual problems, went, went to eventually a developmental optometrist. She used this device called a Brox string as what, and was able to retrain her vision to be able to see binocularly, uh, so that she did have stereoscopic vision. And um, so with some of the people that we um, 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 sort of diagnose as not having stereoscopic vision that I will mention uh, Stereo Sue's book, Susan Barry's book, and uh, yeah, there might be an option for them to um, develop their stereo vision, but there are some cases where it's obvious that it won't be possible at all. So in conclusion, um, using a random dot stereogram um, to test the system's operation and test stereoscopic vision um, is a very powerful tool. I'd recommend it. Um, and uh, it's uh, um, yeah, uh, just something that uh, you know, should just be like bread and butter. Thank you so much.